and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another episode of your premiere facilities and workplace uh, podcast. I forgot what I was doing then. Um, <laughs> um, another great episode for you here today. Um, absolutely thrilled to say um, that we've got Simon Matthews, who is a regional facilities manager for Urban Bubble, joining us today, operating predominantly in the built-to-rent sector. Um, not really a massive sector we've touched on. Now, we've done a little bit on it loosely. Uh, but Simon, hello, mate. How's it going? How are we doing? You all right? Thanks yeah. for having me. No, it's really good, mate. How, how have you been? Yeah, good. Warm, very warm, very yeah. busy as well. Yeah. Uh, it all seems to happen at the wrong, wrong times, doesn't it? You know, it does, the, yeah. The heat, yeah, yeah, the heat yeah, is not good. The heat and everybody wants something, isn't it? Yeah. You, know, you can't even chill out a little bit in the back garden yeah. anymore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> What are we saying? Bring back COVID? <laughs> well, oh, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, yeah. I'm joking. Uh, so where have you come from today, Simon? So I travelled in from Buckinghamshire today. Mm -hmm. So I'm based not too far inside, but outside of uh, Uxbridge. So I'm outside of the, the last stop on the Met Line, but I'm inside the M25. Oh, right, okay. Oh, that's cool then. Yeah, nice, nice part of the world as well, actually. Uh, countryside. It yeah. Might, it gives the illusion of countryside, at least. Well, I've, yeah, I'm the same. I live in Kent, you know, so I live on the top of a hill, which is quite nice. So um, <laughs> yeah. it'll probably be great in summer, not so nice in winter, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, fair shot. Yeah, yeah, fair fair shot. shot. Well, listen, Simon, thanks for joining us today. Um, listen, I always start with a really easy question. Tell us a little bit about who you are, your career, and just give us a quick two-minute snapshot of how you ended up where you are today. All right, well... Simon Matthews, I am the Regional Facilities Manager for Urban Bubble, looking after the London properties in their portfolio. Yeah. Started out my career uh, in facilities uh, quite early on, I guess. So I've, I studied at college, I studied sport, and then I went into sort of sports centre management right. uh, and looked after the sports centre of the college I was at, so it just fell into place. That's quite interesting. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Too, it's not too bad, but I, I, don't, I, I, I can definitely say that my growing didn't ha happen there. Yeah, I, I wasn't. My mindsets weren't right. Were you an avid sportsman then? Was, was it? I put, I put on a good uh, a good show. Yeah, Did you? I, yeah. I was, what, I, what sport? What I, you... uh, football, rugby, yeah. cricket. What, uh, what position in football? Centre forward. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... Biggest biggest scoring season. What was it? And how 20, many? Twenty five, thirty. I think last season I played. Really? I just couldn't. Just my body wouldn't have it. Really? My body was telling me just you can't do it anymore. And I've since I've tried to go back. I had a successful uh, season with uh, a couple of lads that are in the industry yeah. running a, a team that was in the lower divisions, won the league, yeah. to the cup final, lost that. But I just couldn't just couldn't pick it up. And and obviously we were chatting before before yeah. about this, about my, my career and saying, you know, I, I dedicated a lot of time to, to working sort of yeah. seven days a week to, yeah. to meet certain goals. Mm. Football had to, to drop out, unfortunately. Oh, really? Oh, right, okay. What team do you follow? Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 They're interested at the minute, aren't yeah. they? Very interesting. But anyway, this is an FM podcast rather than football. <laughs> so I better, get, I better get back on message, <laughs> Simon. Um, okay, brilliant. Well, so, so talk to us about how you got to where you are now then. So obviously we've touched on school. You then entered into facilities management for your college. What happened next? I got the opportunity to work for a uh, sort of repairs and maintenance firm. I was office based and I was, I was just inquisitive. I think I, I sort of realised that if I don't sort of try and peak, I won't. Yeah. If, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, was, yeah. I was really inquisitive. I had quite good line managers that were sort of interested in at least helping me try and get to where I wanted to go. Yeah. It's just asking the silly questions. Mm. You know, how does that ball valve work? Why is it there? What, what's needed? Uh, and just on like trying to improve on what I understood each day yeah uh, and I, I was able to get quite a good sort of base from from that perspective right okay so going back to what you just said about people that you learned from things like that were men have mentors been an important facet to, to your career absolutely absolutely yeah. I think one that stands out for me was a gentleman in the role that I had after that uh a South African gentleman who's now he's relocated to Australia but oh, really? uh, got a lot of time a lot of respect for him he took me under his wing uh, and essentially there was no stupid question you know i was in an environment quite a lot of bravado you know contractor site yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. engineers technical engineers it is kind of that yeah well, that's it. Yeah, a bit not... banter bants as we like to say well, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. it you can change a light bulb but can you change a wire it's, you know it's yeah the, the sort of things where you're like you sort of 
stand around with your mates, go, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I'll yeah. change a car tire. Yeah. Kind of, that kind of scenario. And I think this go, particular... go get go get me some air hooks or some tartan paint. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly <laughs> that. And I, I luckily I avoided that. Uh, yeah. This this gentleman took me under his wing and, and right. sort of just allowed me to allowed me to be innocent and ask the stupid questions, but gave me the right answers and gave me the right feedback. And I think without that sort of embedding my my knowledge and sort of helping me to to grow. I may not have followed the path that I, I was able to follow, yeah. which was then to work for one of the, the largest real estate companies yeah. uh, doing uh, residential facilities management. So that's how I sort of got to the facility side of uh, yeah. where I'm at now. And Okay, so it's quite interesting that. So, so in, in an industry where there is a bit of banter and people kind of take the make a guy, um, you know, rather than continue that, decided to invest his time in you and, you know, Bring you on, really, as, as a professional. Absolutely. I don't know that there was... Well, that, that was the beauty of it. I don't think there was anything in it for him other than mm. he was just good, a good teacher and a good person. Yeah. In, in, in my eyes. There, there didn't right. seem to be you know, no ulterior motive. He left long before before I left, and I was guided, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, but I, it sort of set me on my way, you know, sort of developed my knowledge. I used to go... Because, again, like when I said, I was working sort of seven days a week. I was hungry for extra, and I was, I was afforded the chance to go out do fancal unit servicing. Yeah. Do... Uh, sort of regularly, you know, like water hygiene checks and stuff like that. On the weekend, went around Bristol, Mill and Keynes, yeah. Hemel Hempstead, like went all over and looked at different spaces, office spaces, residential spaces, yeah. uh, to see how things were done. And that really sort of helped me just understand, you know, from an office perspective, people can book in jobs and can send someone to, you know, to change a ball valve, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. But what, what is changing a ball so, valve? So you, you kind of started off on the tools, really, then? Is, is that a... No, no, no. No, no office-based. Office right, based okay, okay. Yeah, so I've, I've attempted to, to be on the tools and it just yeah. didn't quite happen at the, the role prior to that. But yeah. where I've tried to I've tried to be as efficient as possible yeah yeah uh, I think to in you know standing here today I'd definitely be a bit better at doing those elements now and I, I've sort of learned enough about being able to retrace my steps yeah and to, to know when to hand it over to someone more capable but at the moment, yeah yeah uh, and for you know I, I prefer to be office based and strategic rather than than on the tools on the tools I couldn't do the tools either to <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been trying for 20 years and I'm crap at it yes. <laughs> anything else, the only thing I can do is paint <laughs> I'm a pretty good painter but that's, that's, a, that's a difficult that's yeah. a difficult task it's the, it's the first thing everyone notices right well that is actually true especially yeah. you know the, the world that I'm in built to rent yeah yeah uh, and whether the building's clean exa it, yeah exactly yeah kind of falls into the same thing doesn't it of course yeah well yeah. presented you know? yeah it's better to smell good than to... Well, I was always told better to smell good than look good, but I'm not sure that's applicable. It is definitely combine the two. In the I minute. would say so, yeah. It has to be both, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's no point in smelling roses if it looks like crap. Of you course. know, yeah. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> if, <that makes, laughs> if, someone, if it smelled lovely, but there was like mattresses and cardboard boxes and things like that, yeah. and, you know, it wouldn't look great, would it? The shiniest diamond and whatever. It doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, brilliant. So... Um, who, who was that with then when you worked with the guy that mentored you? Where were you at then? I was at Westway. Westway, okay. I was at Westway, yeah. So. Yeah. And then and then you transitioned into sort of a full-time sort of residential role, really, as your career progressed. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I when I was when I was at Westway, I was, I was working, one of the clients that I had was was Nike Frank on you know, right. my CV, you can see that. And uh, again, got sort of singled out by a couple of the individuals there as someone quite capable and got offered the opportunity to grow up. And I think, again, when we say when we say mentors, I think there are, there are individuals there that just gave me the trust and the opportunity to grow again. Yeah. Rather than, you know, tell me how to do it, I, I yeah. would come to them and say, this is, this is my thought process, this is what I'm looking at. Just have just have the once over on it. And, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. really got the chance to, I got some really, some quite difficult, Scenarios, not because yeah. of because of anyone that was uh, looking after me, but there were there were some challenging moments. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I formed some really really good friendships there. Yeah, based on the challenges that we had to overcome. Um, yeah, that I think it's just added to where I'm at. Yeah, and, and you know, Night Frank have been a real supporter of the show over the years. We've had a few people on from Night Frank, so yeah, we, we know them quite well. So it tallies up as well, which yeah. is good. Of course, and I think uh, some of the individuals. I think I, I was sort of. Pointed in this direction by was it Mihai uh, recommended? Oh, uh, Mihai Lamba. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's been on the podcast. A yeah, fantastic individual, so lovely guy. Yeah, crossed paths with him when I was doing aftercare for yeah the night Frank at Bar right. Square. Phenomenal individual, and yeah, and uh, you can sort of you can see those that do really really well, 
uh, come from that sort of inquisitive background and really yeah, they do. Ask, they'll ask those silly questions. Ask questions, get to, yeah. Get to that. Aspect. Yeah, because he likes to go around buildings, doesn't he? Me high, which I think is really cool. Not you know, if there's a new building going up, he'll go see it. I've been to any of mine yet. Has he not? I'll just, I'll, 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 Mr. Lambert, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> so I out. Right, yeah. you'll, you'll have to you'll have to drop him a text message. Actually, yeah, I'm more than happy. To yeah, my guided tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that time. Okay, cool. Um, so obviously, after that, you you, you know. You, your career continued. You you kind of moved into sort of aftercare manager, and then into the role of sort of facilities manager and regional FM. Um, how did those promotions come about? And what do you what did you do that was different to anybody else to 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 get those promotions effectively? How how did your career grow? I think the the aftercare roles, uh, especially moving from Night Frank, I moved to Battersea Power Station, which is obviously a phenomenal. Uh, and, and one hell of an undertaking as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my key. My, I was way way out of my depth. I'd say I was way out of my depth, but yeah. I was aware that I was going to be out of my depth, and I made sure that any words that were were discussed, I was researching. Yeah, uh, pick valves, for example, I didn't know much about before joining, but now I know a lot about. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Pressure independent control valves. They, right, okay. they were, they were the right. hot topic over there. Uh, okay. Yeah. To, to sort of join that, that was prestigious for, for that was the first real, you know, real punchy role that I had. But then moving towards uh, getting back into FM, aftercare is brilliant uh, if you're of the mindset that you're happy to be responsible, even though you weren't, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. Uh, and there were days where that was really quite tough. Yeah, you know, because you were ultimately just looking for the best for the individual, but it's it's difficult for that to be understood. Yeah, yeah, of course. On some occasions, most occasions, you know, you could get some really easy wins, and they'd be the best thing that's ever happened to someone. Yeah, it, you know, it was so uh, up and down in in as far as what was what was good, what was bad on, yeah. on any given day. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. But well, it's very emotive, isn't it, in that kind of environment? Because of you're talking course. about people's homes, aren't you? So it's slightly different to the commercial sector in that sense. Absolutely, you're talking. You're talking about significant investments in people's homes. Yeah. Uh, from a prestige point of view, but also, yeah, I think they're a cracking set of apartments. I, I only did Circus Village West. I only did the first phase. Mm. Looked after there was 865 apartments, and I had sort of circa 500 by the time I left direct reports. Wow. As in. Uh, customers directly coming to me rather than yeah. the, the the split, uh, and again some phenomenal some phenomenal learnings there. Yeah, yeah, uh, of course, yeah. Some great individuals. Some that I've tried to you know you talk about mentoring. I've I've got one individual that was my my plumber there, then joined me uh, my next facilities role, and then promoted to uh, right. an FM at the next role. Yeah. So someone that I I try to to give back. So so you're actually an active mentor now then across, across your career. I think so. I think because it's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. I think you need to be able to see from both sides of the coin and the individual that took a shine into me and said, you know, you can trust me, let's grow. Yeah. Uh, I like to, would like to be able to do that back. Yeah. I don't need, for me, I don't need a gold medal at the end of the day. I just want to see someone progress and get to their own version of happiness. They might, you know, they might definitely be happy at engineer level, not wanting to go any further. But if I can help uh, to progress them any any sort of direction towards where they want to end up, then of course that it's about, in my mindset, it's about elite team management and being an elite leader. Mm. Being prepared to put that foot forward to say, you know, let's learn together, let's grow. Being able to retrace our steps, be analytical of where we've gone wrong. For me, that gives me a lot of joy. And and 10 years ago, was I that person? Probably not. Mm. Uh, But now, absolutely. Now that I've sort of seen the rewards from my own inquisitiveness, uh, yeah. I definitely reward the the inquisition, if that's the right way of uh, yeah. saying, the, saying the word. But I definitely, I definitely reward those that are are keen to inquisitive, of, inquisitive. I think that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> keen, yeah, to, yeah. keen to express themselves. To, In, keen... Inquisition, I think that that's not very nice. Yeah, something else. Yeah, something happened <laughs> yeah. quite bad with that. Yeah, it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, back back in the mid 15th century, I believe. Yeah. I, I do not claim to be. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong about a century, mate. To be fair, no, I, do, I just thought it was about that that, that period, wasn't it? Uh, okay, brilliant. Um, so, obviously, we've talked about your, your your career. So, talk to me a little bit about what's the most challenging um, part of the role for you. What do you find the most challenging? That's a great question. That's yeah. a great question because it, it varies. Yeah, 
it varies. Um, I think <laughs> between portraying the message in the way it needs to be portrayed, regardless of the audience, but yeah. also portraying the message it needs to be portrayed to the audience. For example, you know, you can't use that room because of a leak. It's how how that comes across. Uh, and I think that represents the greatest, the greatest challenge. Passionate individuals. I've worked with some really passionate individuals, pas passionate clients, passionate colleagues. Uh, and that doesn't always necessarily translate to an understanding of the message. And, and a I resolution, think, yeah. You know, we're all working for, towards the same thing. And if we yeah. have to isolate a room for a day to save it for a week, sometimes that's the best solution. Yeah. Sometimes that's not necessarily heard in, in, in the, the right way. That, that could go for, for any sort of scenario. But I think that's something for me that I, I you know, I, I, write a, I write an email and then I'll rewrite the email and then I'll sense check the email and then I'll go for yeah. it a couple of times to make sure that I'm, I can hit the mark in the way that it's intended. I think that's, that's one of the great challenges. Uh, I guess one of, the, one of the most enjoyable challenges, I think, in, in, in any FM role is being the solution. I think yeah. that's what a lot of individuals, you know, like to get their cape on. And I think what... Superman, yeah. Well, exactly. I like, I like that. I do like that um, that term, like, get their cape on. It's a good term. Yeah, and I think that, that brings a lot of uh, a lot of managers that sort of that high-level satisfaction of, you know, I have solved this problem. Yeah. I think... I'm, I'm sort of, I've, I've sort of left the cape a little bit. I'm, I'm. Yeah. What would be the best way of describing it? Instead of Superman, you know, Iron Man. Is that the or potentially, or even you can say, yeah, like a superhero analogy. You know, I've handed yeah. down the cape to the next individual, and that's what I'm looking to see is those individuals step up and understand it and realise it for themselves. And I think yeah. the day that I can, I can just watch that unfold. I think I would have really achieved yeah. something quite great. Okay. I, I think for anybody listening that's looking to move into the role, well, I'm moving to the industry, sorry. Um, what, what, what type of qualities are you looking for, for, for from, from somebody, let's say, that, that was working for you and you were, you were you know, watching them do their work or you were dealing with them or interacting with them on a daily? What would be the, the elements of their personality that would make you think, I think this person is somebody that I can move forward? I, I've made my mind up quite early, quite often. No. Uh, the main, you know, the main things I need to sort of see from someone would be transparency. I think with within the industry that we live in, compliance, yep. you have to be you have to be honest and you have to be willing to be wrong and yeah. honest about being wrong. You know, did that pass? Yes or no? It it can't be a yes if it's a no. You have to be honest about those scenarios. And so, from my perspective, someone that's transparent, I like somebody that comes with a solution rather than a problem. Agreed. It, that's what I think everyone likes that, right? You don't want to, you know, how do I solve this rather than this yeah. is what's happened and here is how I got here. Yeah. And I think being able to be analytical like that, this is how I've got here, you can then retrace that. So that's someone that can be saved in a scenario. Yeah. Uh, humility as well, because I op I'll openly admit that I'm not the finished article. I'm getting there. Mm. I'm still learning. Well, you are a Chelsea fan. So oh, that's yeah. it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was I was going to drop that in about Battersea, but then I was, I was like, oh, yeah, no. All the Chelsea fans have gone. Yeah, no, it's not the time. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no. Sorry, we'll ten, wait to the end. We'll wait to imagine the end. that 10 years ago, that would have been, I would have been, uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. now. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've lost it. Well, you're like my team. I mean, I'm a Man U fan. We've, we've put up with a, quite a significant period of mediocrity, haven't we? So we've chilled. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, peaks and troughs, right? Yeah, yeah. Peaks and troughs. And we'll be back, mate, both of us. But it's it's definitely relatable as well. If you look at it, it you look at, say, for example, do you go out there and do you acquire the most expensive facilities manager in the world? Or do you look at the strength of your team? Italian teams do that very well. Yeah. You know, if you looked at Juventus's success over recent years or, or into Milan recently, they didn't go and buy from the Ronaldo's right. or, the, or Juventus did, but then they lost. But anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> they looked internally. Yeah. Where was the strength internally? Where was the, the, you know, what we would have said middle of the range purchases potentially? Yeah. But it's the strength of the team. And I think that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to, to do within my environment as well, is bring a team that comes up in sort of four corners rather than top. Yeah, yeah. so you're trying to create balance. Effectively. Ex exactly that. And I think yeah. my, my main sort of ethos is I, I love the ability to share that sort of vulnerability. You know? Yeah. 
I don't like I don't know the answers, but you might or we might together, we might come together and get this answer. I might be able to coax a better response out of someone. How do I paint that wall? Uh, have you tried doing this? Well, no, I haven't. And then someone else can chime in and say, well, yeah, you could do that, but you could do this. And then all of a sudden, you've got ideas floating around. You've got a collaborative workspace. Yeah. And that, to me, is is better than going out and buying Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we bought him at 37. He was, he was good the first time around. I don't know about the second. Yeah. Yeah, it's romanticism, isn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd still have George Best back. You know? yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Okay, brilliant. So what advice would you give to a young person um, or somebody who's working, let's say, for a subcontractor as a cleaner, security officer, or anything like that? What advice would you give to an individual looking to move into the facilities management sector? How would you what, – what would you say the best thing for them to do? What's the best way – based on your – what's the best route? In, in, inquiries. Yeah. Just be inquisitive. Like like I said, sort of, you've got to look at if you don't understand, you don't need to accept that you don't understand. Yeah. You know, why why is there this, you know, take Kosh, for example, safety data sheets. I can easily go and use that bleach and clean the toilet, but why would I do it with gloves on and eye goggles? Yeah. Because. And yeah. being an, an inquire about that and try and learn the deeper meaning behind things. I think that's where the difference between being able to sort of, perform and the, the difference between succeeding lies really is how far in depth you're willing to get for something that's potentially quite simple but that doesn't mm. matter you, you know if you have the passion to understand it then i think you'll go far yeah i think a lot of people forget you know like when you're looking at compliance and health and safety and you know environmental initiatives and things like that usually the legislation is there because something has happened someone's got hurt someone's been poisoned there's 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 a reason for it you know so um you know, that's why it gets drafted up. That's why it gets... I mean, it's not the 1970s anymore, is it? You know, people aren't climbing chimney stacks with a with a rope ladder. You know, it's it's changed. Well, I, I think... And you look at, like, there was the time where all the ash clouds were, were really popular, weren't they? And then so the insurance is written, uh, act of God. Yeah. You know, when you're going on holiday, if something happened out of their control, yeah. uh, that caveat was, was in there. Yeah, we are almost uh, reactive... Yeah, uh, as as an industry, I guess we're putting in place things to prevent the next occurrence. Yeah, but when you look at you know my role now, for example, I'm looking at the the equipment and seeing how can I get an extra five ten years out of that. So I'm trying to think for the future yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we've just implemented a, a HVAC strategy across the the whole of the the nation, where we're looking right. twofold, looking to save uh, on our energy expenditure, but also yeah. to maximise the life expectancy of our uh, equipment. Yeah. Is there any reason why uh, one room should be at thirty degrees? Yeah. You know, on on the air conditioning pumping out red hot, somewhere else being sixteen degrees. We need, we need to find we can find a comfortable ambience. Yeah, uh, and we can perform at that that medium yeah. ac- across the nation we've then got statistics for how each building performs within that parameter energy expenditure so we can see yeah. how much we're spending yeah uh, and we'll have live data from the uh, the equipment how many failures are we getting how many pumps and condensates are getting blocked up how many filters yeah. are going how many fan calls are going yeah. we'll have that data and we can say within a year's time this it's not a trial it's a live program but yeah. this this has produced this evidence here we are 20 grand better on this site from last year, but we are potentially five grand more on, on another side. What are the yeah. differences? And then you can drill down into those nuances and find out what, what has gone wrong there. But for me, looking at that succession planning, it was something that when I was at Night Frank, I was allowed to, to learn because mm. uh, it was residential, because it was a lot of it was plant rooms. I was looking at cyclical maintenance for boilers. And this isn't new to, to the industry, but yeah. to me, I'd never been in a, a position to, to make those changes. Right. Uh, so what we'd done, we, we brought forward uh, major service in the summer mm. with the gas safe. Anything failed, we had six months to solve it until we did a minor service in the winter to bring everything back up to speed. And that, to me, yeah. was... Prolonging the life of the kit, making sure it works, yeah. minimising the call-outs across winter, which obviously nobody wants. But it's, yeah, it's yeah. you know that clever sort of future planning uh, is where you know where we're moving towards. We need to look look ahead. Yeah, so prevention is better than the cause, effectively. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. So that's why you know every, everywhere's PPMs. So yeah, yeah. Looked after. Yeah, yeah. FG twenty. Uh, those standards are in place to protect not only the individuals using the equipment, but the equipment itself. Mm. Uh, and that's where you know that's where we show the the added value that's where anyone could get 
a light switch, turn it on, let it work. But are we going to use an energy efficient light bulb? Are we going to have it on for a certain amount of hours? How are we being smart about this environment and making sure that it's sustainable yep. uh, and lasts for a long time? Okay. So obviously that could kind of moves us on really to ESG, environmental, you know, and all of that great stuff, social and governance and things like that. Obviously it's become a very important facet to the industry. Um how, how do you see that playing out over the next five years? Do, do you see any significant changes? Do you see anything being different to how it is now, or do you think it'll just continue? It will continue to grow. You know, the if you look at, I think, where I, I live in a world of, of new builds and nice, shiny new buildings and all yeah, the... So yours are all, all okay. All of the technology yeah, yeah, yeah. currently available to me can be, can be put in, you know. Yeah. It'll be obviously 2024's iteration of that kit. Uh, where I'd be excited to see is how smart we can get for, for something that I looked at when I, I was at Night Frank was uh, how can I be sustainable in uh, buildings that are grade two listed, grade one listed, you know, that yeah. don't have garden space potentially, that don't have roof space, yeah. that don't have wall space. How can I be uh, intelligent at that? Really hard, isn't it? Well, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I ended up looking at voltage optimization and, and stuff like that to sort of at least do something that was sustainable or at least uh, efficient for the building. But yeah. Explain voltage optimization to the people that, that are listening and don't know who it is. Okay. So I'm not saying that's me, but uh, yeah. go on. <laughs> All of. Uh, all of the equipment that you buy, so your laptop, for example, uh, yeah. comes in at a uh, European standard, which I believe is 20, 220 volts. Yeah, Our yeah. power supply comes in at 240. So, right. for example, imagine that in a building, TV's going off. The excess from that is heat, vibration, noise, uh, is wasted. So Hi. if you imagine, and this is in a nutshell, 220 volts, 20 is wasted every time that we power something. Voltage optimization will get that send 220 to where it needs to go and then recycle 20 back into the system so that ah. it minimizes what's wasted. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just now that I've ironed it out, you understand. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I get it. I get it now. I'm with you. Um, okay, so, 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 so are you doing anything or have you, have you got any interesting ideas that you can share that are taking place right now from an ESG perspective? Um, or, or things you've implemented in the past, apart from voltage optimization. There's there's several things that I'm I'm looking to do, and I, I'm looking at the fact that I've got landscapes that I can look after at the, at the moment. So the right. the avenue that I'm trying to explore is is their ability to turn waste, sustainable waste, into grass feed, uh, estate feed that it can potentially twofold serve as a a sort of self contained feed for a site. The site becomes self efficient. Yeah, self sufficient. Sorry, or can I then potentially, and this was where my thought process was going, can I ask for, let's take uh, Wandsworth, for example, all the sites in Wandsworth, there is a waste station by one of my sites there, but can I then get that food waste, put it in, create compost for it, and then take that out to other sites rather than just my own and potentially yeah, yeah. Make, not only make it self-sufficient for the site, but maybe generate a bit of income as well for that so that it mm. becomes even more uh, effective for us to do that that's in that's my my thought process is but in its infancy yeah uh looking at that i'm i'm in possession of some wonderful estates at the moment some fantastic right. landscapes yeah uh so can i be more effective uh down that route the wards are saving you know they're, they're looking at where we can be effective and efficient you know reducing the literage of systems and stuff like yeah. that which hasn't been done before but well, it has been done before. Sorry, isn't new. Isn't new tech. Isn't new ideas. Yeah. New to my my position. And what's, what's been quite difficult to manage though, because especially in that kind of environment, because once again you're dealing with people's homes. How do you manage what their usage is? How do you how do you prevent them from waste? Do you know what I mean? Is it? It's a tough one, isn't it? It is. the 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 best thing that we do is we we monitor. Uh, energy use holistically so we, right. we monitor both from landlord consumption and from apartment consumption right. not that we're interested uh, to, to really gauge or judge people's activities but so we can be responsible and report outwards for that there's things that we can do we still look after the, the building as such to say if we are able to identify uh, high energy use for example we provide or we can then recommend or influence the decision to the next appliance for example so this washing machine is knocking out 100 kilowatts per whatever can we get one that's 80 90 can we reduce it in any way we can yeah. make smart decisions on how the building runs in a less intrusive and less forceful way 
Right, okay. If that makes sense. No, that's fine. So d- just because I don't know the answer to this. So do, as, as the developer, the person that builds it, manages it, did you guys put the washing machines in or do people bring their own in? I honestly don't know the answer. But... So with, uh, with the white goods. Yeah, like appliances. Yeah, you know, white, yeah. white goods are generally normally involved. I've, I've, I've worked for sort of free build to rent uh, companies and they've yet to not be uh, supplied within the kitchen fit out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there is the option, you know, TVs is one that people will always provide their own televisions. And yes. Stuff. It's not empty apartments. There are elements of unfurnished so people can mm. dress them how they how they want, uh, but the majority are come, come supplier. But yeah, that's where our responsibility will be to, to really review the data. Mm. You know, you look at some, I've had some items where you look at a 70-30 fridge. Yeah. Or fridge freezer, you know, the, the sort of the fitted 70 Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and... You know, one seventy thirty doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fit all seventy thirties when it comes to fitted cupboard doors. That's true. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've suffered that one, and we're talking millimeters. Yeah, you know, like one measurement could be. Yeah, but just a couple of millimeters can ruin your day, can't it? Like, <laughs> that's, it definitely. Yes. So, do you guys, um, do, do you guys sort of in that sector try to educate the tenants as well in, with regards to um, environmental initiatives and things that they can do within their own environment to be more. Friendly to the environment, I suppose. Absolutely. The yeah. build-to-rent environment is so engaged and so uh, immersive. Yeah. Uh, even from, I think we've seen, uh, like, bug hotels and stuff like yeah. that. You know, like workshops yeah, I've seen them. on yeah, site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been some fantastic little projects that have been done, you know, either down from, uh, like, flower making and st- uh, flower presentations and stuff yeah. like that. So there's a lot of engagement. One of my sites has got a, uh, a potting room Really? For want of a better word, yeah, it's it's thirty five story building, uh, and on the thirty fifth floor, you've got like a it's it's a planting room where you can you can do your, your potted plants and look out over the whole of London. Yeah, fantastic view. Wow, have you seen what they're looking to do to um, HSBC Tower? No, over at Canary Wharf. No, look, they've got some really amazing plants there. Actually, to be fair, they're, they're basically going to cut a section out of the building, um, and it could be what he's only described as like a a high rise. Park, I suppose, is the best way to explain it. That's cut into it. Um, it's going to be a mixed use development and things like that. The plans are really interesting. You should you should check them out. It's actually good. it looks like actually it looks like a um, you know like when you watch those apocalyptic films. Yeah, like and um, there's like plants some, growing yeah. out of the building and things like that. It looks like that, but just cleaner. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you know what that that regeneration of of uh, of construction I find is one of the most fantastic. I love it. I, I saw that and I was like, wow, that's the, who thought of that. That's just so. Cool. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to see it. In, I'd love to see it happen. Now, whether it does or not, I don't know. No, of course. But I'd love to see it. Yeah, there, there's so many things. Like you look at Bassey is the is the prime example, right? It's a disused power station mm. that has now become uh, home to not only to, to residents but to three stories of retail. Uh, it's mm. a phenomenal repurposing of, of something that, that still gets to stand. Now, I, I heard it was nearly a football stadium, you know. It very much was, it very much was. That was before my my time on there, yeah. And, and yeah. if if I'm not mistaken, I could be speaking out of line, but I think I purchased for, sold for hundred, so it makes, it makes yeah. a fantastic return on uh, oh, of course, yeah, on investment. And the reason that that was kiboshed was because of the uh, the neighbours down the road towards uh, Nine Elms, not to, not to out anyone without the, the definitive, but they said that they would not be happy with... Uh, yeah, no, there was... There was the a, hooligans. There was, yeah, there was a lot of um, residential property owners that rejected, wasn't there? Which yeah. was, and to be fair, I, I, I don't disagree with... I don't know if that location would have been ideal, really. I don't... I think they would have taken us away from our roads. I love the walk from Earl's Court to Stanford Bridge. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, never, yeah, That would never get boring for me. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I think the route... I mean, at the time when I was, when I was traveling there, it was sort of two hours each direction. So yeah. to get to Battersea was inconvenient. Now I can get to Moorgate, Northern Line, straight across. Really, yeah, well, there's a station there now as well, isn't there? Ex- so, exactly yeah. that. And uh, to sort of see that come to life, I, yeah. I still wouldn't want to go watch the football there. But it would. I mean, it would have been amazing. But uh, you'd, you'd have still gone. You know, I mean, it's one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is to a degree. It'd be a bit like Fulham's, though, wouldn't it? Where it, 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 on the mix right of, on the water, yeah, and, and there'd be a mix of um, sort of the residential. I quite like that idea, though. But could you imagine, like on match day or something like that, it would not be very enjoyable if you. I think if you weren't very well, do you know what I mean? And you've got screaming fans going. But it's the same. I think the same element at, at Fulham, where is because it's so close to the water, it loses its atmosphere out to the Thames, yeah, which yeah. could have happened to, to us. You know, we're. 
We're small and homely, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Stamford Bridge is that. I've been there a couple of times. It is that kind of ground, to be fair. It is, it's, it's got its own... It's a bit like, um, a bit like Anfield, I think. Yeah. You know, An- Anfield's just a bit mental. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry, we've digressed again, but it's still about property. We're talking about planning and yeah, development yeah. of property guys on this. So, <laughs> you know, this is important as well. Um, okay, so what do you think the future landscape? I mean, I know we've kind of touched on it a little bit there, but what do you think the future landscape of facilities management will be? What will it look like in a few years? We're moving into the realms of, of sort of intuitive data led management, I think. Yeah. There are several different approaches to, to how you maintain a building. And yeah. there, there are going to be all these, you know, like with diets, for example, if there was one diet that worked, uh, yeah. we'd all be really slim, right? And there would just be one. Whereas what we're, we're in at the moment, there are several ways to look after a building. Could it be uh, risk-based, condition-biased? Could it yeah. be full SFG20, belts and braces, going for everything, or somewhere in between? Yeah. Uh, and I think eventually we'll see that that highlighted by by data. And I think there are advocates for you know reviewing you know reviewing how a, a service piece of equipment works versus a piece that is attended to on failure yeah my view uh, is that there's going to be a, a need for a slight mixture uh, i don't feel entirely comfortable leaving something to to failure and then yeah. looking at that because i think you you lose the service level and you lose the ability to to plug gaps if you're reacting in that manner for mm. the whole time. But I think, yeah, we're going to use our, our intuitive systems, our CAFM systems, data-led yeah. to, to formulate our decisions, you know. Yeah. And we can we can review that. Has that, you know, that fan core unit failed 10 times in the last year? Yeah. Time to move on. Uh, it's those sort of decisions. Yeah, so do you, do you think AI, AI will have a heavy influence on, on that as over the next few years? I, th- I still think you need someone to to run the ship, and it's not just because I'm I losing the ship. Yeah, yeah. But I think you still need someone to to, to run yeah. that. Uh, yes, it could, but mm. it it can only influence decisions because it cannot tell you the nuances involved. So, we at the minute, <laughs> the minute, at the minute. Well, yeah. I, I think potent- maybe there. Well, no, I I I, I think there's going to potentially always going to be the need for somebody to govern the outcome. Yeah. And the reason the reason I say that is. Say, for example, like we spoke about the fridge freezers earlier, finding one that's more efficient. This particular resident absolutely loves the, the Samsung 7030 split that I mentioned. Yeah. Doesn't want to move to a more efficient, even if it's Samsung, doesn't want to move to it. I like that particular drawer. I love it. That's where my Hagen Dar sits. Yeah. It fits it perfectly. Uh, they don't want to move. Uh, an AI system can't, can, can, can't govern that outcome. That, no, that's true. Yeah. And, and I guess that's where, and the same for commercial spaces, you know. There yeah. will always be one side of the office hotter or colder than the other, potentially, according to an individual, yeah. uh, which AI can't. AI can say, no, you're not too cold. It is 21 degrees. Yeah. It can't tell you how you feel about that information. No, that's very true, actually. I like the way you explain that um, because that is accurate. You know, warm for one person is not warm for another. In, in exactly. I have, I have this conversation with my wife all the time. <laughs> She's always freezing. I'm always up, you know. Um, it's one of those things. It's, I think that's an argument every every um, couple has. To be fair, one's e- one's usually warm, the other's usually cold, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. To be fair, uh, okay. So, what's your greatest decree- achievement in your career so far? What what what's the thing you're most proud of? Oh, that's, a, that's a really uh, really test one. I think getting my first shot at facilities management. Yeah. Uh, being trusted to to take that step up for Knight Frank, I think, really was. I didn't realise I could achieve something in, yeah. in my mind. That was monumental, mm. and in fact, actually, I I, I eclipse that every time I, I move to a new role. So maybe yeah. just the fact that I'm still hungry, still driven, and still looking for that next step up. Uh, the you know the opportunity to work for Bassey Power Station was 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 amazing. For- that is wicked, though. I mean, what a way what a way to learn your trade. Um, but, on, on that, I yeah, mean, what I is think, it? it's the largest residential developer. Is it the world or is it Europe? Uh, definitely in Europe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, well, repurposing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think was the the key one on that. It looks uh, so good too. I, they have done such a good job there. Really. It had a phenomenal aura about it, and I'm still really, really quite close with some of the really great individuals that that work yeah. there. Uh, 
Greatest greatest achievement though. You've really got me me stumped. I think I I, I sort of I achieve and then I I, I continue. Yeah. I, I if I you know spend time reflecting each position that I've been afforded to to have a go at is a massive achievement in itself. To be sat here as the regional facilities manager for for Urban Bubble, looking after looking after London and the properties is currently my my greatest achievement. And yeah. I will surpass that both with Urban Bubble or, or wherever I, wherever or whatever next happens. But I think tomorrow I'll be better than I was today and that's kind of the mindset that I've got. Yeah, and, and I 100% believe you, Simon. Really 100% believe it. But conversely, <clears throat> right, what about regrets? Do you have any regrets? Anything you would have done differently? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Uh, there are several times where I have, I, I think I, I mentioned with passionate people say, sending that email before it, I have definitely understood things and forced the understanding outwards without checking whether it's been understood. And yeah. I think that is something that I can, I can reflect upon quite often. As far as my career goes, uh, I, I, very little to regret if I'm being honest. No, I the trajectory has been fantastic, hasn't it? I, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with what I've, what I've done. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't regret, you know, going for the interviews I've failed, and I definitely don't regret the ones that I've, I've, uh, I've achieved. Uh, yeah. I, I think it is. I play out scenes, you know. You, with, yeah. you know, you, you could, you know, you're waving to someone, they start waving, but there's someone behind you. Yeah, that sort of self reflection. Did yeah, I, yeah. Did I send that email well enough? What could I have done? I think uh, in recent times, it's definitely making sure that I have garnered the understanding before assuming it's understood i think that that's i I regret when that happens yeah uh and that could be a personal one as well you know say tell the wife that i've uh yeah oh you know it's done and she but but what bit of it's done you know yeah it's that would be the the one not yeah not signing that one off making sure it's understood yeah yeah i'm aware of it and it's something that i'm again you know self-reflection i'm I, i will improve on and tomorrow i'll be even better at it yeah exactly exactly okay uh, last question, right? We stick you in the Where Many Hats time machine, send you all the way back to that first day as a facilities manager. What's the advice you give yourself? Oh, do you know, there's a funny story about the first day, so... You... I thought you were going to say there was a funny story about a time machine. No, 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 no. Uh, like, well, twofold on this, but I'll tell, I'll tell the story at the same time. So uh, yeah. I just started out for, for Night Frank. I've moved away from... A small, not a small time office because it was it wasn't a small time office. Yeah. But I, I moved from an office desk space role to a more what I saw as like I saw it as like big time Charlie. Yeah. yeah. I'd gone and bought me suits from from M and S. Yeah. I'd gone and bought me nice new shoes, and uh, I made the mistake of so we were based in Baker Street, but we had a satellite office in Millbank. Yeah. Yeah. Went from Baker Street, ended up at Westminster to walk down. Now I got really bad blisters that day. Yeah, and and this was the one for, I was so keen to impress that I just didn't care. Like, do I look the business? I, yeah, I got to. I'd left the receipt in my shoes, and uh, I'd got a massive blister on the whole bottom of my foot oh. because I've been walking around on the receipt for my suits and my shoes. Yeah, uh, so I'd suggest uh, a bit more, a bit more uh, <laughs> comfort in my ability. I guess yeah, would be yeah. the one. Think about the practicality associated yeah. with a role. And if you're an FM, you do yeah. a lot of walking. And you know exactly yeah. that. Yeah, so I think that would be my. Just take the time out to realise you're you're here on merit, and yeah. you know you you don't need to impress anyone like that. Here because you deserve to be. I'd say so. Yeah, That'd yeah. Be my advice. That's that's probably one of the better bits of advice we've had for the hockey time for the um, wear many hats time machine, which is really good. Okay, uh, final question. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you like to do outside of work? Uh, mixed bag, mixed bag. I. Uh, although the appearances of a, a slumbering athlete, I really enjoy running. Yeah. Really enjoy running. Really enjoy cycling. I saw that on your LinkedIn actually. I saw that on your LinkedIn. I've done a few. I've done a few half marathons. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, so my 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 dad passed away in April of last year. Our condolences. Uh, apologies. Yeah, Sorry yeah, to say that. Do you know what? Yeah. That's a, and again part of like, my management pieces. Mm. I, I now understand how that feels. Never had that before. Yeah. Uh, but so I I made. You know, I was promised that he'd be there for my Brighton one, and obviously on his deathbed he lied. <laughs> he didn't turn up. Yeah. Uh, I can be a bit candid about that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I always, when I run, I've always got his handkerchief with me as well. So whenever I go around, I've got something that re- reminds me and connects me to that moment. Yeah. But it's the opportunity to get out and explore, and you know, whether that's running, I've sort of an amateur camper, if you will. I've taken yeah. my kids camping a couple of times. Uh, I love camping. 
Oh, just Jump in, anything that gets me in the middle of nowhere, I'm happy. Exactly yeah. that. And and what I do, what I've started doing more and more and more, uh, I've got Garmin Connect app for for my running, and as I go, can I do this? Mm. And it's a matter of I've got a thirty kilometer run set up. I'm never going to get round it in one go, but I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, can I do this? Can I do this? And constantly the the ability to to challenge myself, running and and cycling. You're responsible for getting out there, getting around it, finishing. It's all you, and yeah. that I've I take so much joy in that now. Um, Helps you build men- mental strength. Oh, absolutely! I think absolutely. You finish that run, you go, yeah, I am the, I am, I am yeah. him. Resilience, exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that that would be for for me. I like fishing. Don't get to go nearly same enough as I uh, I deserve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, uh, I've been lucky that I've been looked after as far as say going to Chelsea. Uh, one, yeah. one of my Battersea friends hooks me up for for that every now and then, right. which is phenomenal. And then we get to you know get to go and talk in it. We've we've got kids roughly the same age, roughly the same quantity, and we we talk in a rather peaceful environment. I do like the way you said quantity of children. I like uh, that. Yeah, that's, that's very. I like that quantity. Yeah. What's up? How, what are we talking about here in terms of quantity? Three and one on, on the way. My God, man, you're yeah. mental. Yeah. I've got three and I went and got spayed. <laughs> Not <in> anymore. <laughs> and, and openly, and, and openly, I am absolutely petrified. As I've never had an operation. Yeah. I understand that that's a logical uh, decision, but yeah. God, am I petrified. Yeah. Petrified. Yeah. I like, I will, I'll, I've got a nice shed. Uh, I'll live there. That's yeah. fine. That'll do. <laughs> no, fair. Yeah. I'm only joking. I love all my kids. Of course I do. Do you know what I mean? But I, the thing is, they're just so expensive these days. It's I mean. keeping them challenged. Yeah. I think keeping them challenged. And How old are yours? Five, soon to be four and two, and then the one in October. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. really close then as well. Yeah, but they'll, they'll be a close group though as they grow up. Oh, they, they'll they, be really close. Sort of, they're they're working against me at the moment. They really are. Won't well, be like WrestleMania in your house when they're eleven years old and yeah. kicking the crap out of each other, <laughs> and you're in the middle going, "Get off of me!" That's it. But I think there's that child, that that childlike uh, attitude. I'm mean, to know everything. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? I love it. I'm yeah. not bored of it yet. No, good stuff. Well, you won't be, mate. They keep you entertained. I'll tell you that for now. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the show, Simon. How did you find it? Yeah, that was wicked. I appreciate uh, being invited on, and I, yeah. I really enjoyed talking. No, I really enjoyed listening to your views on the industry, um, hearing about your experiences, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. All right, guys, well, listen, that's the end of another show. Um, a really, really interesting one. Um, as ever, please like, follow, and share the podcast. And I'm sure that if Simon, um, if you need some information um, regarding his podcast today, um, I'm sure you'll be able to contact him on LinkedIn. We'll be posting his profile um, alongside the podcast. All right, guys, as ever, take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.